Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Longley's Line Podcast. I am your host, Stephen Longley. Remember to like, follow, subscribe, all of those social medias. Stephen Longley for me, Longley's Line for our show, Light Style Studio for the studio here. And as you guys know, we bring in guests from all over the entertainment industry. And before we got started on video, we had just audio. And today, my guest was one of those just audio guests, Mr. Jess Peterson. How are you doing, sir? Thank you for coming. No problem at all. Thank but you for the invite. Before we get rolling on talking about anything, go ahead and promote socials, where you want people to find you, what you want people to find, anything like that. Ours is actually pretty – it's just at RenoIceRaiders.com or like Instagram, right? So I don't know how our social people locked all those down, but our Facebook, Instagram – YouTube, it's all Reno Ice Raiders. All the Ice Raiders. Yeah. And if you guys don't know, they are a local hockey team in town. Senior A. So. Not semi pro because <laughs> it's such a weird deal. Like, it's Senior A. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, let's go ahead and dive into that no. a little bit. For those people that don't, what's, what puts it in this class of Senior A? So, I, because every time I talk to the media, they always, like, I'll see the clip later. They'll be like, oh, semi-pro hockey team. We've never called it that. So yeah. senior A essentially is all the players are good. There's talent. Um, it's just, it's a step above beer league. It's a step below, I guess you would say, the ECHL. Maybe mm -hmm. even step above juniors in some cases just because it's guys that still, you know, guys that whatever reason, you know, maybe they got injured. Maybe they missed their window. Maybe mm -hmm. they, you know started a family tour early week, whatever the case may be, they missed their window to maybe go officially pro. Yeah. Um, and so senior A, it's a really big deal in Canada. It's actually picking up steam here in the U S because I think it's a fun brand of hockey, but that's, I guess that's the best way to put it is, you know, full check fighting, you know, guys get a little bit of money, not a lot, at least on our team, they do, you know, it's not like they're paying the mortgage with it. Yeah. But it's helping out a little bit. It's, it's a little something. It's beer money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it pays for some stuff at the it's bar. It's like the step above the beer league gives you that beer league money. Yeah. And so, I, so I mean, but, you know, the fans seem to like it, but I'm just <laughs> – I always have to point that out because if if somebody says semi-pro, the other teams or guys that are in, like, in the hockey world chirp it to death. Oh, sure. And so you just get razzed and you're like, I didn't call it semi-pro. Yeah. They called it semi-pro, but it you're the one getting yelled me. at. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, the news does that a lot too, where they'll say semi-pro hockey team. It's like, fuck you. I said senior A. <laughs> does that come with the other one, that new one that just came into Tahoe? Yeah. So that's the step above, right? Okay. So that's East Coast Hockey League, ECHL. And don't it, don't ask me why there's an East Coast Hockey League team on In the Tahoe. West Coast. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, it goes NHL, AHL, ECHL. Okay. Um, you can make an argument. Like, NHL's top of the top. It's, it's Yeah. In terms of hockey, right? You know, if you're, you know, but there's a lot of overseas leagues that are really good. Um, I would say the KHL, but I think with all the stuff going on with Russia and the sanctions on the Ukraine war. It's yeah. definitely taken a step back because they don't, if you're an import, like a foreign born player, mm -hmm. you're staying the hell out of Russia right now. Yeah. You can't so they've lot also like they've banned their players a lot from going to other countries. That makes a lot of so sense. So Olympics, too, yeah. they're bounced. Um, there was actually, so in their global, the NHL just had a global series in Stockholm, Sweden, mm -hmm. which that's when, you know, like when football or whatever goes and plays in Germany or something. Yeah, international games. Right, so they sent a bunch, they sent four NHL teams to Stockholm, Sweden to play. Wow. NHL games, official, but each team had a couple of Russians, whatever on them. They had to get special visas and passes wow. to go there because all those, the Baltics, you know, the Nordics, like anywhere in Europe right now, they, they're flat out just not letting Russians uh, travel, I guess, yeah. is what the point is. And so that's um, – but, I mean, KHL, you got the Swiss Elite, you got all Svenska in Sweden. So, I mean, there's a lot of really good leagues um, in Europe, which, I mean, I I don't know. You'd have to talk to somebody smarter than I, I am on this topic, but you, their version of – it's probably similar to the AHL, American Hockey League, which mm -hmm. is the second rung. Okay. Um, maybe even a little bit lower than that. Uh, European sports works a little bit different, but yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, European sports, I would imagine it's kind of its own conglomerate. Yeah, I mean, I don't, Europe's 
I mean, once again, I'm not the expert on this. This is just what I've gleaned. Yeah. Or, or, like deduced. If just you sort of kind of picked up from it. I mean, I'll, the corporate sponsorship aspect works a lot bigger over in Europe than it does here, where our professional sports teams, NBA, MLB, whatever, like TV contracts, uh, ticket sales, stuff like that pays the bills. Mm -hmm. But in Europe, it's strictly almost advertisers. Like they don't, as far as I know, like the big money contracts for TV and stuff don't exist unless you're talking about soccer or football if you're in Europe. Yeah, um, we're in America, <laughs> so we know what football is. Well, it's kind of funny. Like you know, I, I get it, though. But, yeah, but it's like they have a point. I mean, you do use your feet over there. Like they have it right. We call ours football. Yeah. And it's like, do you use your feet? No, you actually can't. It's there like, is uh, <laughs> one time when you can, <laughs> right, or actually two times pun, when you yeah, can. Bill Burr had a whole joke about <laughs> Did it. He, really? he was like, how we need to get rid of kickers because this is <laughs> football where we aren't allowed to use our feet. We just need to get kickers. We just need to get rid of kickers in fantasy. Um, yes, I'm okay <laughs> with that too. But no, yeah, so that's. Uh, so I'm being kind of back to our original question of ECHL, East Coast Hockey League. That would. In America, that's the third rung. Right? Oh, okay. So, so that's kind of where. Yeah, I mean, I think they're going to have a good product. I, I'll just, I think their name sucks, but that's <laughs> beside the point. Sure, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I mean, the, the logo's cool, but the, the name is beyond awful. But well, trying to find a good logo or mm -hmm. mascot name, there's so many around, and so many are taken. Like, yeah. The, especially, you know, when, like, the Washington football team was the <laughs> right. Washington football team, and now they're the commanders. Yeah, I know. Like, they couldn't, like, they had the idea of being the Red Tails or, the wa or like, the Hogs or something. And I was like, <laughs> either one of those would be better, especially the fact that the commanders have an actual hog that runs around. Right, exactly. And it was like, is that supposed to be a com Am I reading the definition of commander wrong? I think they should have just left it at Washington Football Club. Sounds old school. I think so, too. <laughs> it's like if you ever hear you know, a New York person talk about the Giants, mm -hmm. they go, my New York football Giants. <laughs> because I believe it was something where the San Francisco Giants were in New York. So they uh, had to differentiate between the two. Oh. So they were like, it's my New York football Giants. Mm -hmm. Because if you just say, oh, it's the New York Giants, which one are you talking about? Right, and there, I guarantee there's a copyright thing there, too. Oh, I'm sure there's... Some lawyer wrote some asshole letter to somebody saying, don't say it that way. Yeah, it's like the going back to the commanders, it's that whole big issue where, like, the Native Americans are actually... Mm. There's, like, a whole association oh, yeah. that wants them to bring the name back because yeah. the actual logo was an actual chief. Correct. That they were paying tribute to every time they went out there and you're just like mm -hmm. yeah i mean no, no, it's, you honkies are mad like, <laughs> right it, like you know? it's so tough because it's like yeah you're like a white guy and you're commenting it's like well yeah. like does it actually piss off the indian guys because that's like yeah and who i mean who knows like the news says it did yeah i right? just show up in washington still sucks. but then like, yeah i get yeah they're still they're still gonna end up four and 12 whatever yeah and, and then i just see them have a all-out game with the new york football giants and i'm like <laughs> i'm not i'm not even here for right, this exactly. i just have somebody on my fantasy team <laughs> that's all i'm watching so if, if you got somebody from washington on your fantasy team you're just you're already out of it yeah Pack it's it. like oh i've got sam howell see i don't even know who that is and i'm he's, i'm he's i'm a quarterback see i didn't know that I'm yeah. a, and i'm a football guy and i pay attention <laughs> It's okay. You didn't need to know <laughs> you it. You didn't need to know <laughs> it. It, it, did, it doesn't help you in the slightest. Exactly. But going back a little bit, did you grow up playing hockey? Uh, yes and no. So Reno's always <laughs> had – it's always been off and on with rinks. Mm -hmm. So a little bit digging back into Reno's history a little bit. We actually started with a rink in Meadowwood Mall in the 80s. Late seven, maybe late 70s? Definitely the 80s, obviously. And so – where the food court is now in Meadowwood Mall, for anybody that still goes to the mall. Um, They're usually under 20. Correct. My kid goes there constantly. <laughs> it just walks around. <laughs> yeah. Hot topic. Pretty much. Um, and so there was a rink in there to start. That one closed down, and then where the Coconut Bowl is today with Wild Waters, mm -hmm. there was a rink in there. I want to say, don't quote me on the dates, but I'm in the ballpark, like 90 to 94. And then that one closed down. Right. Then we had one open up in 
uh, Total Sports, which is off of, it's in the warehouse district of Sparks, off mm -hmm. of Spice Island Drive. I have no idea what it is today, but it's it's a warehouse. Huh. Um, but anyways, that one was open 2000 to 2005, 2006. Hmm. Once again, don't quote me on the dates, but I'm in the ballpark. Right. So same thing. So to answer your original question, I yes, growing up I did, but it was always off on, and I was never good enough. I had different sports growing up. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned this in the first time I was on. The guy who actually stuck with it um, was my brother, Andrew Peterson. Mm -hmm. and so he – basically, if you wanted to gr grow up here and play hockey, you had to travel. Like, yeah. you, you couldn't do it locally consistently um, just because availability of ice or rink, whatever. So he would have to go over to Oakland and or you know Roseville, Santa Clara, whatever – and play on those teams. Which is just such I mean, an odd place for hockey to be involved, aside from, like, the Sharks being there. Well, the Sharks is what sold it, right? So, the, it, like, especially with the tech scene now there in the Bay Area, the Sharks, I mean, they, they've they developed that market mm -hmm. extraordinary. I mean, it's it's nothing short of um, just mind-boggling. I mean, they've got a practice facility with six sheets. They've got a beer league that runs 24-7. And I, once again, don't quote me on this. This is just what I've heard. I mean, 150 plus teams in the various leagues. I mean, they've got some guys that play hockey over there. Wow. The Sharks suck right now, but they yeah, do. I know. Yeah, <laughs> but they do have a lot of hockey fans, and you know, Marlow Thornton, you know, they, you know, Burnsy. I mean, like a lot of those guys have been traded or they've retired since mm -hmm. then. But they've really had some name brand players. They've had them. some players there. It's just it, not, nothing's come from it. Especially yeah. too, it's like I. Being, I'm mostly a Bay Area fan when it comes to all of my sports. Yeah. So I'm an Oakland A's fan, yeah. a Niners fan, and then a Sharks fan. Right. So it's similar to whenever I watch an A's game at the beginning of the season, they always say something along the lines of, it's a rebuilding year for them. <laughs> it's like, fuck, you've been doing that for 20 yeah. years. Wasn't that three years ago? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's been rebuilding years. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Sharks had their cup run and then... <sighs> That you have to like with the and we're getting off on a tangent, but whatever. But the way hockey works, especially at the pro level, is they've got a and I can't really define it, but they've got a, what's called a triple hard cap, where mm -hmm. um, you can't go over it. There's no luxury tax. Everybody has to like your whole roster has to fit under eighty five million dollars for okay. the season, plus or minus. I'm pretty sure it's like around eighty five million. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't include the coach or whatever because they'll spend whatever on that. Yeah. But um, you gotta you gotta fill the whole hockey team for eighty five million. Meanwhile, you look at basketball, baseball, hockey, or football contracts. They're gonna be one dude on the roster that's making that much. Yeah. So it's always been so in hockey, your mistakes are very glaring. You can't buy your way out of it. You can't just buy out a player, kick him out, make your salary cap go down like the NFL or NBA or something. There's there is no luxury tax. Like you either make this work. So if you sign the wrong people, you can be in the basement for years. Yeah. Um, and that's probably what's happened to the Sharks a little bit. Has there been – hockey is one of my third-rated sports mm -hmm. when it comes to it. Football is the number one. I would follow baseball that I like watching right. hockey when yeah. it comes to it, and then basketball is there. So has there been any talk of anything changing? Because a lot of, you know, like football and baseball, mm -hmm. baseball is trying to speed the game up. Because yeah. of how many people say it's boring, has there been anything along those lines with uh, hockey that you know of? Yeah, I mean they've been, but they'll they'll do little stuff, right? So okay. hockey's kind of a strange sport where it's it's similar to baseball, I guess, where the NFL will just wholesale change rules. Yeah, you know, like oh, you can't you touch the receiver, you're done. Penalty mm -hmm. flags, like you name it. Like mm -hmm. NFL really juice scoring. Yeah, and that's why you get like the argument of like what who the best QB is well the rule fine whatever the rules were different okay but yeah. hockey they've been making goalie equipment smaller um, really? yeah pads um, like they've been messing with the jerseys a little bit on the goalies uh, they really in 2004 2005 they cut down on holding and slashing um, hooking stuff like that mm -hmm. so if you watched a game from the mid 90s like if you're ever on NHL network and yeah excuse me just watch a vintage game it's a like you, you don't know what the hell you're watching. Yeah, because I mean, guys are just different. digging in with their sticks, holding people, hooking, and so they they open up the game a lot. Um, yeah, they're they're trying to do it, but the NHL's biggest problem is um, 
I didn't used to think this way, but the NHL's biggest problem is their leadership. Like, I'm not a fan of – this is really getting Luigi. You'd have to be, a, like, a, a big hockey fan to kind of get this. But, like, I'm not a fan of Gary Bettman. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of growing the game and some of the stuff they could do marketing-wise and letting the players um, – be more expressive, stuff like that. I think they've dropped the ball. Yeah. Huge. We've got one of the fastest, most exciting. I, I've i never, and I'm biased, obviously, but I've never I've never seen somebody new to hockey go to a game and say that sucked, even if the score is 9 no. nothing, They always have a blast. Yeah. Um, football, to me at this point, and I'm a huge football fan, um, to me at this point, the amount of commercials and the stopping and starting and the flags, mm -hmm. to me at this point, I mean, I'm I'm one of those guys, you can do whatever, I'm going to watch. Yeah. But it's gotten to the point where I actually, like, it's almost unwatchable. Yeah. Where you're just like, fuck, dude, like, it's the first quarter and there's already been four flags and I've already got my, you know, we're on our fifth Prilosec commercial, like, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. My wife and I get into this conversation a lot, too, with the refs where, they should be fined for the type of calls that they make that yeah. are stupid. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. But then at the same time, if they're making this call, then they should be making the other calls, and then yeah. it just keeps everything going. And I'm like, well, it, football's got to be football. Let the boys play. Yeah. But then they make these calls, and she's like, well, if you get, you know, like robots or something in there or somebody to watch it, then – calls are going to be made and they have to do what they have to do and like but that's also yeah i think not the, the game yeah i mean yeah i think the only sport that you could probably honestly do it without quote unquote refs is baseball i, I think so too yeah like you, you need some base guys but a strike zone is a defined area yeah whereas especially in football and hockey it is like obviously there's the goal but hooking slashing for you know cross-checking it's very mm -hmm. much however the refs feeling that night yeah a big thing too when it comes to baseball now they will go over the umpire's statistics <laughs> they just trash him where it says <laughs> he calls him. calls a lot to the inside left corner oh yeah you're like how the fuck do you know that? well the players yeah, like, will pick the, up on that too. yeah they the, see it the every time will, the players will fucking study that and be like okay well we got this on tonight like at that level they yeah have, they can get that i data. imagine it too it's like they take off their hats and they have like oh a yeah game plan cards yeah. but they take it off and they see the referee and it's like what does he normally oh, yeah. call on like it's old baseball cards yeah. or something 100 yeah where they can just see it the whole time <laughs> but let's go back to hockey yeah i know we, we we're, we're ranting <laughs> So. It was like, it's a whole sports talk. It's yeah, like, it's a sports podcast, by the way. <laughs> if you guys didn't know by the Sinatra. Yeah. <laughs> if, because uh, we've had it a couple of times where I've had guys come on that as soon as football gets brought up, mm -hmm. I'm like, it. this was a poor choice because I will talk football, the right. entire, especially Niners. Like, I'll, I'll talk that all day. Well, sports, well, in most things, I have an opinion on. So, like, yeah. I can bitch and whine about whatever yeah it's you, like, you can talk to my wife she'll tell you uh, same thing <laughs> like when half of my teams suck and only one is actually good it's like i can sit here and talk about why x y and z is going wrong right. or like bring up the a's moving to vegas who's like cool they're in the same state now i have to drive eight hours to get there <laughs> instead of three and a half you gotta buy new jersey too you know they're changing that far. oh i know it's uh, i've got this cool little Oakland A's polo that I have that says Oakland A's. I'm like, I'm never going to get to wear that again. Right, exactly. So for hockey, when it came to it, you said your brother was the one that really stuck mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. And then going on, did he ever make it to major leagues, minor leagues, anything like that? Sort of. I mean, it depends how I guess you want to define it. So he ended up playing juniors in Canada. Mm -hmm. Uh then he went and played uh, Division III uh, college in Minnesota. Okay. Um, actually made it pretty close to a Frozen Four for D3. Um, so, I mean, great, great career as far as that goes. And then he, he did uh, – he went over to Sweden and played pro. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so not okay. the top league, but he was in a Still. rung below it, yeah. And so he was, he was over there for four or five years playing essentially pro hockey. And then while he was involved in it, did you kind of stick around with the game at all or as Nothing. soon as so we didn't have a rink yeah. right so when he was running around doing whatever i had other sports growing up and so he was the 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 genesis of it was my dad like our family came here by way of minnesota my dad's from duluth minnesota uh my mom's from brainerd well okay. she'll tell you she's from illinois but she grew up in brainerd minnesota and so that's kind of the genesis of where the hockey gene i guess 
came from. Sure. Right. So, and then we kind of got lucky in the stars aligning. So my brother came back from Sweden right around the time that they opened the rink here. Okay. And he had come back and he was like, he had just got done playing. And when you do something at that level, I don't really care, like whether it's golf or base, if you talk to anybody that's played at those levels and whatever their various sport is, they have no desire to do the game for at least five years. Yeah. And so he moved back here. I don't think he touched his skates for a couple of years and the rink opens, but then he got invited, uh, some of his buddies that he grew up playing when he was, uh, uh, in high school and stuff in California, they were on a senior A team, the Vacaville Ice Raiders, mm -hmm. NorCal Ice Raiders, if you will. Yeah. And they said, hey, we got a senior A team. And he had, I don't think, I don't want to speak for him, but I don't think he had any clue what the hell senior A hockey was. Sure. He was just, fine, yeah, sure, I'll come and play. He like he's, he keeps in great shape, so he's one of those guys that can just jump into stuff, and he has no issue. And he's a nasty hockey player, so that wasn't an issue. But, yeah, we all went down to the games. Like, they were in Vacaville. Um, yeah. Few fans, nothing special, but yeah, hey, it was a lot of fun. Especially to Vacaville isn't <laughs> isn't really Vacaville. Uh, <laughs> I don't really. I, I'm not there, so I don't care. Vacaville sucks. Yeah, like I, it's so the way it was pitched to me when I when I got involved as I actually asked the question, "What's wrong with Vacaville?" And they're like, "Nothing, but it's got two prisons in a movie theater. That's Vacaville." <laughs> I'm like, okay, "That kind of sucks." Yeah, if you've ever passed through. You will see signs for Vacaville. Right. And you know how you kind of know it sucks? The amount of traffic well, it's, every time you're around. That's like weird. It's, it's right on 80. It's on the way to the Bay Area. And it just, I don't know. Like it, it, you know you're coming near it. Yeah. And so you kind of think like, oh, Bay Area. Like, I don't know. But anyways. Um, no hate on Vacaville. Yeah. Like all of a sudden. If like, you guys are listening. Just getting, yeah, I'll just get carved. Like, for, but anyways. We all suck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, we Reno here. Come on. But yeah, because <coughs> so anyways, then the rink opened here, and the guys immediately started pitching my brother, essentially Andrew, on, hey, we'd like to move the team to Reno. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, I didn't really see it. I thought it was just going to be, I thought it was just going to be something to kind of occupy my time. I didn't to what it is now. I had no idea that it yeah. would morph into that. But I was like. I, like it was a whole sales pitch. It was there was it was actually pretty official. So that was kind of the cool part. Um, uh, and yeah, so we went and talked to the head honchos at the rink, and it was kind of funny because the rink was brand new, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, before I think before we even had our first skate there, the doors like I'm in there pitching basically the board of directors of the rink. Yeah. Hey, can we bring this team here? And I don't think they really had a clue on it either. Like I was. I had no idea what I was talking about, to be honest. And they were like, uh, just fake it till you make it kind of thing. Kind of. And the board, for whatever reason, went along with it. Like, I'm actually kind of like, if I, if I know what I know now type of thing, mm -hmm. I probably would have said no. And not because of anything like nefarious or anything, but it just kind of, I don't know. Maybe I want to take that back. Like, I don't know if I would have said no, but I just, I, once again, I don't think the rink knew what a big deal was going to turn into either. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, like, not necessarily a distraction, but what a big piece of the rink it would turn into. Because mm -hmm. the whole antithesis of the rink here is it's right in the title. It's the Jennifer O'Neill Reno Ice Community Center. Mm -hmm. Community Center. And so the guys at the rink who run it and who essentially funded it, their big deal has always been kids. Like, yeah. The kids' programs, we are teaching kids how to play hockey. That is the stated, like, if you ask anybody that's had anything to do with the ring, that's the stated goal. Beer league, whatever, secondary. Like, all the, it's always about the kids. So i got to shift my legs. They're falling no, asleep. Um, and so, like, a senior A hockey team, it's a little rough and tumble. Yeah. And not that, not, no, it's not anything like. Not that it's not for kids. Right. But it's also. And not not for him. Correct. And so you, you kind of, it's a balance, right? And yeah. so there's a funny story about that that I'll get to in a second. But anyways, like they – honestly, they didn't really fight as much. They wanted to know a few details. Yeah, sure. We, you can play here, like whatever. Yeah. Um, and I just don't think they thought it was going to be as big as it turned out to be. Yeah. Um, not that they're mad even now. Like they're happy with where it's at. But you know, the – you know, right. kind of supply and demand correct. issue of it was more, oh, yeah, sure, bring them in. Oh, shit. Like, correct, and it blew up, on. and it hasn't taken over the rink by any means. Like, the kids are still paramount. Like, that that part's all fine. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's morphed into something that is just mind-boggling to anybody that's been involved on the inside of it. Yeah, because it's a lot of 
fun. Like, well, it, like, it, it brings correct. such a crowd in that, if, <laughs> like, it, yeah. you know, the amount of times that I've gone with buddies and everything, <laughs> like, we're just there to watch a hockey game. Correct. And watching a hockey game, if you've never been to one, it's much like going to a live sporting event. Right, and we don't have Connor McDavid on the team. We've got some very good players, but mm-hmm. I mean – Hey, if you're a hockey guy and you've played at a high level, you might kind of shake your head and be like, I don't get it. But it's just, it's the right market for it. Yeah. You know, there's not, we don't have a hockey team arena. We don't even essentially have, I guess, the ACHL team now in South Lake, if you want to kind of, but that's South Lake. Like, that's not Reno. Yeah. Um, personally, once again, who's ever running the ECHL team up in South Lake, you're stupid for not putting it in Reno because um, mm-hmm. you would have sold everything out 10 times over and yeah. it'd be a dent. You, you would have one of the most sought after, like, I don't even want to get into it. But anyways, they put it in South Lake. Great. Good for them. I get him. Um, they flew and they saw the lake. And they're like, oh, there's water. We yeah, look at how cool this lake idiots. is. Why don't you come to Reno where you would have had – it's They would have sold out season tickets. They would have had one of the nicest rinks if they would have – If they, they had this huge rink here, oh. you know how often people would want to go down to it, it especially would, now. Like even – They would have we sold out every – it. it Whatever. That's just something that I've been ranting about in my <laughs> off time. Anyways, um, but yeah, so it's it's been really good on that front. Where you know when it like from the iterate from kind of the genesis of it to where we are now, um, yeah. I mean, I don't see really how you can complain about much. We're exposing mm-hmm. people to hockey. I know. I know a lot of people have taken up hockey because they come to an Ice Raiders game for the first time. Yeah. Right, and they see it, and the next thing I know, I see them and learn to skate. Um, excuse me. The uh, the rink calls it icebreakers. That's kind of their learn to play hockey program. Not kind of that is, and that's a good play on it, right? And that's it's called icebreakers, and they've got their league. It's sold out. They pack, you know, everyone's paying their money. So I yeah. mean, the rink's doing very good with it, and we can take some credit for that. Not all of it, obviously, because I think it would happen even if we didn't exist. But mm-hmm. I know we've generated some interest there. And yeah, it's same. brought a different revenue in that they weren't expecting. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's stabilized revenue. I don't want to say it's added because you can. That's actually the leave it to Reno for this. Is of course we build something that we've been trying to get built for 15 years that mm-hmm. everybody. And this is more conversation for the guys at the rink. Everybody trashed the rink idea at least officially. Sure. So if you're a hockey guy, you're like, yeah, it'll work no problem. But if you were just some guy that was getting pitched on funding it, whatever. Hockey will never work in Reno. Like this is stupid. Blah blah blah. Right. I know they. I know the guys that ran around and raised a lot of money for it. Private money, by the way. No government money. That's something that always gets misconstrued. Um, they basically, you know, got sl- the door slammed in their face a lot, saying, "This is stupid idea." Yeah. But so leave it. To, what I'm getting at is leave it to Reno to. They finally get a rink built, and then within the first ten minutes of it being open, everyone's like. We don't have enough ice. We need to build a second sheet. Mm-hmm. And it's like, God damn it. Um, and so that's what they're actively trying to do right now is they're actively fundraising for a second sheet of ice connected to the building that you see there. Mm-hmm. And it'll basically just be a mirror image of what you see. But that's there's so there's still so much demand. You kind of figure maybe like the new, you know, the new car shine, you know, dulls a little bit. Yeah. It hasn't. If anything, the rink's gotten busier. Yeah, you the know. amount of times you can sit there and talk to people, at least just for me oh, yeah. on the sidelines where I can sit there and be, oh, yeah, we were going to Ice Raiders game the other week, and they <laughs> just, what? Right. It's like, yeah, we, there's a the hockey team that's here. They go, no shit. And then I'll talk to them a couple weeks later, and they went to a game, and they're like, that was the coolest thing I've ever been to. Well, and, like, not every <laughs> – it's so funny because we just had a game against – we just had a series against San Diego. This is such the pain in the ass thing for us is – I want to see. I, I have to control the product to a certain extent. So our so we just got done playing the San Diego Super Hornets. Sure. They're kind of a brand. Uh, no, they're, they're a brand new team this year. Great group, of, great great group of guys. We just had them in town this last weekend. Mm-hmm. And we're recording this on December sixteenth or whatever. Yeah. Friday game was wasn't horrific, but a little bit of a Donnie Brook. Like the whole sure. second period was a wrestling match. Mm-hmm. Guys, sticks all over the place. Guys wrestling, fighting, and I'm just sitting here like, shit. I'm gonna get in trouble. Like the rink's gonna be pissed. But then all the fans are like, best game I've ever seen. That was awesome. Yeah. I'll be back tomorrow <laughs> night. I'm like, shit. Like so, I've got this. I've got this weird thing where 
I have to make sure it doesn't. There's there is an entertainment factor there, mm-hmm. and the the rank or anybody hasn't really ever given me crap for that. But the the mayhem and a little bit you need you need one of those games once in a while. Yeah, because if it was just it sounds bad, but if it was just pure hockey, like not that you get bored with it, but it's kind of the reason you go to NASCAR, right? I like, was going to say the same. Thing. Hey, the racing's fun, but I'm waiting for the big one. When you see a car go flying in the air, yeah, you don't want the guy to be hurt. Correct. Yeah, but you, you want to see the crash happen and right. that car flip three times. Right. But if, if you go to a hockey game, right, I want to see some. Fights. And so it's such a balance because. And we, we we do have a couple of fighters on our team. They're good hockey players too, but they they're the enforcers. They, but they love to fight. Yeah. So you've got the two big guys right now this year are, and they've been here before. But uh, Tony Tyrell and, and Roger Hutchinson. Anyways, they nobody asks them to. Nobody's like, hey, you need to do it. like they just like to do it. We're here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They like available, <laughs> open for business. This is what we came for. And so. I don't have to worry about our side necessarily, but anyways, yeah. So, like, I'm I'm kind of thinking maybe after Friday, and nobody said anything by the way. But after Friday's game, I'm like, I may I might get drugged into the principal's office, uh-huh. and hey, what are you guys doing? But no, that never happened. But B, I've got every fan just maybe little buzz, drunk, whatever you want to call it, just leaving. Uh-huh. That was the best thing I've ever <laughs> seen. I'm like. Fuck, we didn't see a lot of hockey though for like a long <laughs> period of time in the game. Yeah, and uh, and so that's that's kind of the balancing act you got. Yeah, so. it's like there was about what five shots on goal, and that's about it. Maybe. <laughs> well, so like, and that's like, it, it, if if people have asked me about the ECHL team a lot, and I'll go back to that. Like, if they had, this is going to sound stupid, but if they had half a brain, which based on the name they pick, they don't, and the location, they don't. Um, I would just the first year. I would just absolutely load the team with goons. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have one skill guy on that roster. Yeah. But then you have like a season or two where it's absolute mayhem. But then you bring the skill guys in, yeah. and then all of a sudden you start to fill out your roster. Where not only are you beating them on the scoreboard, you're also beating them in the alley, is yeah. what they say. And I, you, I don't know if you can necessarily pull that off in this day and age because just. Of the way this day and age is, type of thing, but a lot of the times, most people want instant gratification. So right. after the first two, it's like those fights were awesome. <laughs> we lost by six. Correct, and it's like, yeah. well, but yeah, but like there's such an emer- especially at that level of hockey. There's yeah. su- there's such an entertainment factor where you go in an NHL game. Okay, the entertainment factor is I want to see skill. I want to see goals. Like those are the people that are in depth watching. Right. I want to see fancy stuff. Whereas it like on the lower end, it's like. No, I'm going there to crush beers. Like, I have nothing better to do. I want to see just absolute mayhem. Like, yeah. Like, there's, I don't care if you guys score a goal all season. <laughs> like, who? Like, who's fighting who? That's, I want to see some fights going on. Not, it's not the most sophisticated, um, you know, kind of marketing plan. But that would be my two cents to it. But nobody listens to what I have. So. <laughs> Welcome to the club. But now everybody's going to sit here yeah. and listen to what you've got going on here. Right. So now that. Kind of to really jump back a little bit. Yeah. So you didn't think that anything was really going to come from it. No, not and at all. And then it starts to gain traction. You pick it up, and then you realize, oh, we've got something here. Is yeah. Is that kind of how it went? Or? Yeah, like, so something we can be accused of, and this is fair, at least in the senior A world, senior A hockey world, we probably take ourselves a tad too serious. Okay. Um, that's fair. It's there, there. I think there should be a jokey aspect to senior A hockey. Okay. Like it's, it's kind of pro beer league if you want to like really kind of get down to nuts and yeah. bolts. But like we have a social team. Um, we have you know we do we take care of certain things for the players. Like we run it. We run a legitimate above board in terms of effort organization. Where mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of other teams, it's kind of like a weekend for the boys type of thing. Yeah, it's like so, oh shit, there was a game tonight. Yeah, so we I can kind of. We can be accused of that, and that's fair. Sure. But at the same time, because we did all those things is why other teams now look at us and we get emails and text messages of, how in the F are you guys doing this? Yeah. And it's because we're putting so much effort on the stuff off the ice. Mm-hmm. You know, the social, you know, my, you know, 
just being the general manager, I've made myself very accessible to fans, sponsors. Like, if you email whatever the team, you're talking to me. So I get ticket questions, and I get, you know, can I bring, you know, you know, can I bring my baby to the game, or do I have to buy him a ticket? Like, I'm answering all that stuff directly. I have yeah. the ability to do that because it's not a gigantic organization. Yeah, you don't have to. Right, like the Reno Aces everybody. can't do that. No. Right, the the UNR basketball team can't do that. Like, yeah. they have stuff to do not that i don't but it's just they've I, got specific people for it. correct and i've got a small enough organization where i can pull that off but um yeah so that's something where i knew we had something like first game like mm -hmm. our very first game we i'm not making this up i think we put like 400 tickets on sale and i had no clue how many we were allowed to sell i didn't know what the ring could hold nobody had a number and i was like I'll just sell 450 tickets and see how it goes. Yeah, on Eventbrite, which is you know the ticketing app we use, and they I'm not making this figure up. We sold them out in 30 seconds. Like wow. we broke Eventbrite for <laughs> 10, 15 minutes. It's, it, we get we Eventbrite had error messages. <laughs> so the first thing I realized is, okay, we need to raise ticket prices because <laughs> <laughs> sure. obviously I I think we did like 20 bucks a ticket. And it, they're thirty now, by the way. So it's not like I did. I, I didn't. I didn't go Scrooge McDuck and goes totally. Yeah, evil. you're not going to break the bank. But um, but yeah, I mean, and immediately our email list and our social jumped, you know, enormously to where I'm like, okay, well, obviously there's people here that like hockey, even yeah. if it's you want to call it shitty hockey, not fine, whatever. Um, I th we have a very good senior A, but a senior A team, by the way. But you know, if you wanted to knock it, sure. But there is still a demand there. And we hadn't yeah. had this sport in Reno since the Renegades, the the Reno Rage, twenty mm -hmm. years ago. Um, so that that was kind of the first indication. But then what you run into is you're like, all right, the new car smell. Eventually, people stop giving a shit. Yeah. Like, all right, hey, cool, we can go. So that and that was the next thing you have to overcome is then everyone starts. They says, well, great, you sold out the first game. Good for you. Like everyone's super supportive. Mm -hmm. But then the assholes come out and. Well, wait, you know, just wait a year. You know, this is Reno. Like, people get bored with stuff. And it, knock on wood, we're in our third season. We've sold out every game. Yeah. Now, I'm not selling out the big house in Michigan, but I'm selling out every game, and I've got yeah. I've got people waiting outside to get walk-up tickets. You're filling the stands, and everyone that comes is excited to right it. and like i'm not getting like the shitty comment after the game of like well you know like you, you know how you do something right and you'll get 99 compliments you're like cool i'm feeling but like this is awesome uh -huh. like then you get one asshole that just walks up to you and like bitches about whatever and that's all you think oh about. that it just wrecks the whole thing yeah and you have to kind of block that stuff out but i don't even get that at this point like i huh. i get happy people i get happy yeah fans and so you know, I. It's not the most scientific metric, but it seems to be working. You know, and I, I don't want to make it much more complicated than that. But that's kind of where we're at. People want to be there, and you're going to let them be there. Well, I mean, and, the, and the, like I said, the ticket demand is strong. Like our season passes sold out. Our sponsors, our sponsor slots sell out. So you, I mean, as far as you know, those metrics go, it's like, okay, like what are we screwing up? And we're a little bit hamstrung just by you know everyone's like, well, you should sell more tickets, but. Like, I've still got the constraints of the rink, but then also I want to make sure everybody has a good seat, too, because like, that's kind yeah. of something else I run into where you should just sell more tickets. It's like, yeah, but the logistics, then then I've got some guy paying 30 bucks to sit, to stand fifth row from the glass, and mm -hmm. it's like, you know, are you really offering that guy value? And so that's what I run into where I'm trying yeah. to keep the experience, for the people that are there, I'm trying to keep the ex experience very intimate in the sense that, you can either have a great spot in the sands or be right on the glass. And I don't give a shit what anybody says. Being on the glass in a hockey game, I've never been to an NBA game. And I've certainly never been to an NBA game on the wood. Yeah. I'd have to think it's something similar, but basketball doesn't have any contact mm -mm. within reason. Sure. Draymond Green just got suspended, so <laughs> Dude, know, it's got no more contact. Dude, he just cold cocked that guy. But anyways – um. But, yeah, like, you just see a guy just get run or checked or whatever or mm -hmm. a fight right in front of you on the glass. Yeah. I don't – I'd be – and once again, I'm biased. I'd be remiss to say if that's not one of the coolest things in sports. It's amazing. You don't get that anywhere else. Right. Like, 
I, you know, even football, football, there's not a lot of intimacy in the sense that you've got a 50 yard sideline, you've mm-hmm. got guys, kind of guys on the way type of thing, you got the fans of the benches, like, yeah, I, and you know, whatever. But, you know, baseball, same thing. Like, baseball, like, take being on the baseline for a Reno Aces game, who I'm a big fan of, by the way, we, we've done some work with them. Um, I just love going to the ballpark there, but being, yeah, baseline, it's, it's in, but mm-hmm. same thing, like baseball, there's no contact. Yeah. So it's like, all right, line drive, cool home run, but it, there's still something just watching a guy just get smoked up against the boards. It's like, all right, yeah. <laughs> just get like, smacked. All right, I'm going to order four more beers off of that <laughs> one. So like. We've had that a few times where me, I've got a group of buddies mm-hmm. that we always go to Aces games. Mm-hmm. We go to Ice Raiders games. We do kind of the whole thing. I've got one buddy who he finds somebody on the opposing team, and that is his person for the Just entire day. Just fucking carves him. The entire day. He's like, five. <laughs> what are you doing, five? And just is chirping the entire as, as time. As long as he doesn't cuss, I won't have to kick him out. Yeah, we make it a point. It's like, hey, we're going to get hammered over here by the glass. Right. But you're not going to be sitting here cussing at him the entire time. And he's yeah. just smacking on the glass. And yeah, I, th- he wants that reaction <laughs> from him. And we had it one time where we went to I can't remember who. But we were right there by the glass, just smacking on it the whole time. He goes, five, what kind of shot was it? And just <laughs> harping at him the whole time. Two seconds later, you just see him go. <laughs> and that's so we, we actually had, he was actually, they're actually one of our sponsors, but the uh, the Lubras, TNT Yard Services, shout out sponsor. We know you're listening. Um, they, their, their kid actually made a sign, because same thing this very last weekend. San Diego's game was an app, but they had one guy in their team that was just a rat. Mm. Number 98. If you see this, 98. You know who you are. He's actually a pretty good guy <laughs> off the ice. But anyway, it's just an absolute piece of shit all game. Anyway, so the next night they made a sign where, you know, it's Christmas, so they've got, you know, 98's an angry elf. And somehow they got like a photo <laughs> of him. But the guy played it right, though. So they made a, the, so they made a sign and poster for him. They put it on the glass for warmest, but the guy played it right. He did like, and this is what I love about senior A hockey is the guy immediately like saw the sign. He wa- he went up to it. He's like, turn it around. He took a selfie with it. <laughs> he made sure he found the guys after the the fans after the game, cool. and he's like, dude, we got it. And he had he had a good sense of humor about it. And I was like, see, like that's what you have to do. That makes it fun. You yeah. you have to own it because if he would have got like pissy about it, or whatever, and he doesn't have that kind of personality based on my very short conversation with him. But I was like, yeah, he handled that right. Yeah, so, but just. To, just a piece of shit on the <laughs> ice like every like the whole stadium was like convinced i was like dude i hope that guy hangs out in the locker room for at least an hour and a half because i had fans like we're gonna kick that guy's ass i'm like no you're not just please leave <laughs> yeah, just no no but he, he got going. he got the whole arena into an uproar so that's what i go back to that the entertainment fact. right like you have yeah. that but then i'm sitting there talk i'm like looking at some of the head honchos at the rink who's like hey this is for kids i'm like I'm pretty sure a kid made that sign. <laughs> yeah, like, and so it's it's like it's a it's a little bit of a tightrope act. Yeah, it gets more involved. But you, if you don't have yeah. a game like that every once in a while, it's you're kind of secretly rooting for it. But at the same time, you don't want it to happen. But you don't want the chaos to ensue. But right. you also want that little bit of drama to happen because if you just have a perfect season or something yeah. happens and you're not sitting there bumping your chest the whole time, right. you kind of need those to help. I make you feel more involved. It, it, it's it's got to be there. You got to like. I just call it the WWE factor. I mean, right. say what say, say what you want about you it. Got to have a heel. Yeah. Think about the business model of the WWE for a second. Mm-hmm. It's fake in the sense that you're, there's no real punch. Like the guys absolutely get the shit kicked out of them. They're, I've I've seen wrestlers' bodies yeah. at 40, 50 years old. Like they don't make they don't do well in old age. Yeah, so it's not fake. But the whole storylines are fake mm-hmm. essentially. Right, like, like however you want to wrap it up, like, and they and they sell it out. People know it's a show, yeah. But they just love the plot lines and all that stuff. And so when you start applying that to what we're doing, we have something real, and you have to have like those plot lines have to become. They're not written; they have to happen organically. Yeah, and I think that's what really draws fans in. And the sports media spends. Excuse me again spends all day trying to conjure those up. And where I think with 
our deal, we don't quite have to do that just because it's a very small, like we have a very dedicated, I want to say like 2,000 to 2,500 fans mm -hmm. be between like season passes and guys that I see at every game. Yeah. Like they, they interchange, like people get busy, whatever, but it's, and so that's, yeah, you just need that once in a while just to start shit. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of, it keeps the adrenaline flowing right. and everybody gets excited about it. Oh, they get, they go bonkers for it. Kind of going along the lines with 98 there. When you've had, say, road games or home games, have you had any sort of stories from the road that had some sort of chaos like that? Or <laughs> maybe not even chaos, but, you know. So nothing, nothing horrific. Um, I mean, it, it's it's all repeatable, but just the boys have a good time on the road. Sure. So you, what you have to know about road hockey in senior A is it's never – you can get your whole roster to show up for a home game. Yeah. Like, everyone's in town, great. We're going to have fans. But our road games, you're not – we've actually done a pretty good job this season, but you're kind of piecemealing a, uh, a roster together. Yeah. Like, you're stealing guys. You're bringing them in from outside. Because it's just, you know, hey, guys got jobs. It's Some senior hockey. couldn't get the time off. Right. So that's why is. whenever you see a team on the road and if they get, like they, – if they just get shit kicked, you just know that they had a hard time putting together a roster for right. whatever reason. Um, but so, uh, actually, I'll tell the story. I won't. I won't put names on it, but I think it's semi funny, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> um, we actually had. We just had a game. We had two uh, two away games up in McCall, Idaho, and mm -hmm. they're and they're coming here later. But I wasn't at the games. But um, it's just kind of funny because. <laughs> I'm I'm not going to get in trouble for telling the story because I'm. But anyways, the 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 refs absolutely homered us sure. it was according to the players that were there i wasn't there but according to the players on our team that were there it's the, it's the worst ref game they've ever seen mm -hmm. the calls were ridiculously lopsided you know basically the refs were you know you know uh f fist pound on the other team like hey way to go and then right. we kind of found out later that one or two of those refs might have been practice players on that team <laughs> So, like, the bias was there. Yeah. Anyways, like, we lose an overtime this game 6-5. And fine, whatever. Like, the guy, yeah, sure, you want to win, but whatever. The guys. You're playing against the refs, and you still get it to overtime. Yeah, but I mean, it's still, it's yeah. senior ace. All the guys are like, fuck it, just let's go to the bar, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, our guys roll in, and it's in McCall, Idaho, so the whole town shuts down at 5 in the afternoon, apparently. Uh -huh. But anyways, th there's one bar open. One of the refs is there. <laughs> um, our guys get our guy. One of our guys gets into the scuffle with the ref. Now sure. we have the video. It was. I'm not. I'm not going to say who. I. I think it was pretty mutually started. Uh -huh. I don't think one side actually like started it. Started it. But then, it's not funny. But the the player's mom was also there. Oh. And this he's a, he's a grown guy, but his mom just hey, yeah, I'll, mom I'll, I'll, coming I'll, to support you. Yeah. yeah, I'll come watch you play. Like I'm not up to anything. She she got into the brawl too, <laughs> and so like we actually got the bar footage a little bit, <laughs> and it's just like nothing horrendous happened. There was some punches thrown. No, yeah, a it's, couple a, of them, it's a bar fight. A couple of connected, game, but yeah. it all of a sudden I get a phone call of like, hey, there's you know bar fight, but actually, hey, the worst one was the player's mom got into it with the ref's girlfriend. I was like. <laughs> The ref's girlfriend really like they're like yeah <laughs> like so we were kind of it was one of those weird things where nobody was like pressing charges nobody yeah. was pissed or anything mama was, didn't raise no bitch that's why i'm here it was but it was just such a funny thing because i was like wait like <laughs> the, the, wait your mom like okay so <laughs> and we you, you kind of like and yes for anybody watching we discipline the player like don't worry it's just it's not a free-for-all but it's just like something stupid like that yeah. happens where it's it's kind of harmless, but then we also had to tell the guys like, "This can't happen in Reno." Yeah, like we've we've got the kid aspect again. Like, okay, on the road, can't happen again. So yes, we reprimanded everybody. We took corrective action, but I just it's kind of a funny story. It's a fun story to tell. <laughs> to be like, but also, kids don't do this. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. When you go out to the bar. Make sure your mom doesn't want to also get. Well, into and it was just like make sure the ref isn't there too. Okay. Yeah. And our guys like because you, you, yeah, I'm not cast. Can't help it. If if anybody watching, if you want to blame our guy, fine. Like uh, like we'll, we'll we'll take the hit. But it was 
I'd say it was mutually sought after based on the video I saw. But yeah, I especially know. when tempers are kind of flared and you know, yeah. it's it's, <laughs> it's competition. Everybody right, wants to win and get excited. And but it, um, actually, no, I, I've got another funny story too. Um, so we were just actually up in Sun Valley, Idaho, Sun Valley, Nevada, Sun Valley of Reno of Nevada does not have a hockey team. Sun Valley, Idaho has a hockey team and they are very good storied franchise. Probably, I think the second oldest senior A hockey team in the country. Wow. Okay. Oh, Um, Idaho. Yeah. No, no, this team's a big deal, but I just love this story because so we roll into town and I actually was on this trip just. I wasn't playing, but I, I don't play the team, but I was just there to help out, whatever. Anyways, we roll into town. They've got signs all over. They're, they're called the Sun Valley Suns. Okay. And it's a big deal in Idaho. If you run into people in Idaho, ask them about the Sun Valley Suns. More likely than not that they've heard of the team. Yeah. So we've we've been trying to line up a, a, a deal with them for a while because they're sought after. They're really good. It's a good opponent. You're, like, you're going to see good, solid hockey. Anyways, so we roll into town, play our first game. We lose our first game. So anyways, the, but at the end of the first game on Friday night, this was two weeks ago, scuffle at the end of the game. Sure. Nothing serious, just kind of a wrestling match, whatever. Anyways, their guy gets kicked out of the game. Our guy did too, but their guy wasn't. Um, but their, their guy got kicked out of the game. I don't even know the guy's name. Anyways, that same player is at the grocery store the next day because all day you just you don't really have anything to do. Sure. And it's, it's Johnny Garrity. So 25, he's got a black guy, super good looking. Um, we got a black guy this last weekend. Anyways, he's, he's, he's in the grocery store in Sun Valley, and this kid walks up to him. I, the way the story was told to me, the, guy, the kid couldn't have been more than nine. Mm-hmm. And basically, walk, and Johnny's looking at like milk or like whatever right. and just shopping. And the kid walks up to him, and the guy he got into a scuffle with last night was number four, I guess. The guy's name was Trevor. And so the kid walks right up to him out of nowhere and just points at him. He's like, if you fuck with Trevor again, I'm going to be so mad at you. Like, just, like, unloads on our guy. And the kid's nine. Like, yeah. get, like 10 or whatever. Whose kid is this? And yeah. so he's just kind of looking around like, uh, doesn't think anything. The kid leaves. Anyways, he walks out of the grocery store. Same thing. Now the kid's in a vehicle with older kids. Uh-huh. I don't know, 60, somebody was driving the vehicle. Anyways, yeah. he's like, yeah, next thing I know, all the windows are rolled down the car as they're rolling by. <laughs> they flip me off and Just say, fuck Reno. <laughs> it's like, the guys could not stop laughing. We told the opposing team that. And we're like, so this happened today. They're like, yeah, we have really passionate fans. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got kids on your side. Lines, oh, huh? yeah. Like, and like on our side too, that's actually like, none of our kids have verbally assaulted an opposing player, as far as I know, inside of a grocery store. That just makes me laugh when the whole kid aspect is there. Oh, yeah. It's like, should we take well, a trip up to Idaho, really? Well, quick? no, <laughs> we would go back in a heartbeat, but I, we just we couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. You have to be good. Like, over senior hockey, a nine-year-old's telling you to get fucked in a grocery store. It's like, what? <laughs> like, and like, and he thought it was, like, we didn't take offense to it at no, all. Like, the other not. team actually kind of apologized, like, hey, sorry, and we're like, <laughs> And we think it's kind of funny. That was Trevor's <laughs> nephew. Yeah, that's it's it's something like bad. yeah. The best part of that that guy wasn't even playing that uh, that night. He had to go on some hunting backpacking <laughs> trip, so he wasn't even playing that night. Yeah, <laughs> and so like, like well, he's not even. He's that. like, all right, well, we couldn't have gotten to a scuffle even <laughs> if I wanted to. But yeah, so that like stupid stuff like that happens. Um, that's it's, fun. But like uh, you, you know, like especially when you get a group of guys together, it's not there's not one overarching story. It's just, it's all the stupid stuff guys talk about. And yeah. just, I, it's just when you're hanging out with your boys. Yeah, everyone's just kind of hanging out, bullshitting. Like, Correct. Like, then, that's what, you know, somebody says something stupid, and then you just carve the guy for 25 minutes. But then yeah. you elongate into it. Two weeks later, you're bringing up the same joke. And it's just, I don't know. That's just yeah, the way when it goes. you hold on to it, and it makes kind of an impact on everybody, right. you have fun with it. Exactly. You can't, and you can't help but sit there and hang on and have a good time. And, Correct. So. And, going out to idaho and getting the bird from a bunch of teenagers <laughs> dude, like I just, he's like dude this jeep just rolled by just fuck reno it's like what like just, all right. <laughs> i was like all right cool man like Whatever they're really saying. but no they had signs in their town like all the bars knew about it like the whole town showed up they to i i want to preface that story with sun valley is a very nice town their fans were absolutely golden to us like Good. everybody was very appreciative that we we're there we got multiple thank yous like the guys were walking like so let's just preface it of 
Okay, there's a little shithead nine year old <laughs> walking around Sun Valley, Idaho. We know but, who you are. But the the fans uh, were phenomenal to us. Yeah, it's similar to like here how you said you have those couple of loyal fans that are here oh, yeah. i've had it a few times where i've worked on a house or two and i see ice raiders oh, yeah. here just kind of hanging around I'm like oh have you gone to a game uh, have i gone to a game and everyone sit there and bs about it the yeah entire time. i'm trying to come up with like a good name for the fan club like i i really i want to start like a fan club aspect i just haven't gotten around to it yet and i can't come up i wanted to call them the marauders because we're ice raiders but we haven't really hit on like we're essentially pirates, like we're ice pirates, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know, we got a helmet. Skull. Raiders. Yeah. Right. Like so I was like, all right, like what's under, I just one day Googled, like what's an underling of a raider? And they're like, well, they maraud, or, you know, they're marauders. And I was like, that's a good, and then our marketing people were like, nobody's going to fucking know what a marauder is. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, sure they will. And like, I kind of, and we put it on our, and nobody would pick up on yeah. it. Like, is I, that like the ones that deals with the bull? Oh yeah. And yeah. people were like, so you're changing your name to the Marauders? I'm like, no, I'm trying to do this. And our market, like our marketing people, our, our social guys knew what was going to happen. Yeah. But they kind of just let me walk. Into Saw the, it from a mile away. And they just, just like let me walk into, into the barbed wire <laughs> in the trenches and just like, all right, if you want to do this, go yeah. ahead. And it just it didn't work out. The kids can just be the icicles. Like the <laughs> icicles. <laughs> <laughs> the kids like, are just the ice. <laughs> we, we like we we actually we're working on kind of maybe having like a, a a junior team or something. It's like a far fetched idea of ours, but yeah, we're not going to call them the icicles. But if we had a sense of humor about it, we, <laughs> icicles would be a good one. <laughs> well, it's because uh, a friend of ours she plays for the female hockey team that comes around that kind of plays on the rink as well okay yeah so they that's actually something the rink does a really good job at yeah so she has a great she hasn't been able to because she is pregnant at the moment right. so she hasn't been able to come but we've i think we were able to go to two of her games and it's you know uh, it's it i say it without being disingenuous and no. hating on like the nwa or something yeah. like that but it's like you go to the female hockey games the fans don't come out in droves but it's, for, it's it's still fun not for beer league right like, no you yeah. know and i mean like i said we like because like i i, I know most of the girls teams the, the, the people that run them and the rink does a, a phenomenal job about that and that's actually something i want to shout out a little bit is we have a lot of women hockey players yeah and we have a lot of very uh they come to the games like yeah. they're, they're fans so i'm obviously supportive of that but we also have a lot of kid uh uh children girls yeah women whatever um and and the, i think what the rink pulls off very nicely and i've mentioned it is they don't point it out they just support it like hey we have a we have a women's program it's a big deal to us sure You're, you get good ice time you get treated just the same as the men for ice time whatever and yeah. if you want to play in a men's team, you can too. Um, you know, men's beer league team. Like yeah. I think, like there's a girl, girl uh, goalie running around. Like blah blah blah. Um, but I think what the what the rink does a really nice job of is they don't. I guess they don't grandstand. Like it's it's hard to. I was trying to explain this. And I did a shitty job of it. But the rink doesn't grandstand. And say like, look what we're doing for women. They just have the program. They support it. They make sure it's known. Yeah. And it flourishes. Yeah. But they're not like ramming it down people's throat 24 7 of like, look what we're doing. We're doing all these great things for women. Right. We deserve a patent. They just simply support it. Yeah. It's like, and, hey, you can come do this here. Right. And if you, if it's, if you want something that's specifically women, boom, you're like, because it's, it, hockey is one of those things where, and I know it's like treading into like territory in this day and age, but. Of the like, wokeness. Right. Like where I don't, you know, it's not a good, I, I don't think it's a good idea necessarily. And by the way, there's plenty of women players that are way better than I am. But there's Oh, I can't even get on skates. Right. Like, yeah. But there's still a difference. And yes, there's plenty of women that are good enough to play with men, but they're just it's like in terms of the contact and like actually fun aspect of it, like I don't think it makes a lot of sense to Yeah, you mix got a two. six five, two eighty guy coming down on a gal that's, you know, right. five five above yeah. fifty one wet. Well, like, well and especially when you're 
when you're just learning to play, like nobody can really stop or control themselves. Yeah. And I think actually the icebreakers, I think they do mix them. I, th I think the girls and the guys do play together just because everyone's trying to learn. And yeah, everyone's learning and getting it together. But every now and then I see something where just a guy doesn't know how to stop and just yeah. truck somebody. And it's like the girls, like it's like, you know, I never see it go the other way type of thing. So it's. Yeah. yeah. Until that one time, as soon as you say this, then you'll be at the rink the next day and then yeah. all of a sudden. <laughs> right, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> just a girl just absolutely crushes a dude. But yeah, I mean that's like you know because like, we've actually had like honest to god we, we've had girls try out for the ice raiders and they sure. have they haven't made it because they're girls or women. They just they didn't you know the we had a goalie and she is very much qualified to play for the ice raiders. Just we already have two goalies, right. so that spot's filled. So she tried out for us. Like if we. She very much could play for the Ice Raiders in the goalie spot. Um, we haven't had any forwards or anything try yet, though. But that would be something that I think would be neat somewhere down the line is if we eventually had a women's so, like Yeah. Like, I mean, cool. Why not? If she can – I don't think the guys would care. I know if the, she can I, block I the know goal. the guys wouldn't care. Yeah. Like, if she can play, like, that's all anybody gives a shit about. And yeah. if you get some high-level D1 women's player, like, yeah, she can run fucking circles yeah, around a lot of people. Yeah, just yeah. weave right through you. Yeah, and it's like, but yeah, so that, that, that'd be something neat if we could get done whenever. But yeah. I mean, the right person has to show up. I think the cool thing, like you're saying too, it's like not harping on diversity. Right. Because just, the other thing is like, who cares? Like if yeah. the best person yeah. is out there, the best person's out there. And well, it's kind of like, well, you I, know, it's fun. Well, I, I think what happens with that deal too is the more you harp on it, the more it feels forced. Yeah, the more and, it's spotlighted. Well, and just like people's reaction to it, like I don't care who you are. Like I just think the more it gets spotlighted and just shoved in your face, people have a natural reaction to be like, no, I, I don't yeah. want anything to do with that. Like, no, 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 no. Well, you know, do you have a problem with this? No, I just don't like it shoved in my face 24-7. Yeah, it's like, you know. So I'm going to say no to it because I want it to stop. And so it, if it's something I think that happens naturally, but it's supported in the background without, like, going psycho on the marketing campaign, yeah. absolutely, I think it can work. Yeah, if you're not trying to sit there and monetize on it yeah, because exactly. of something like that. Well, and I think, I, think, I think in that space right now, I think you're getting a lot of grifters. I think you're getting a lot of guys that are seeing, they're finding a way to make a dollar. Mm -hmm. and they're exploiting certain causes to like they don't care about whatever you're pushing for yeah they're they found a way to make some money off of it and they're like all right like we're doing this yeah and i don't i think it's very disingenuous so but like i know we got off on a rant again but that's something the ring does so all the women <laughs> watching they have a very good women's hockey program yeah come out and try it we, oh, 100%. We, we've got like i said a friend of ours who actually sits there and plays on a lot of the leagues and mm -hmm. we've met a couple of other female hockey players that have come through and they're all cool as shit and yeah. they can you know skate figure eights around you oh easily 100 percent. Like, yeah especially i mean like especially beer league it's you know it's whatever. <laughs> yeah you're there to have fun <laughs> no but yeah. i mean there's four or five girls that i can think of that skate at the rink right now that could play men's like no problem i yeah. mean they just don't for whatever reason they just you know once you get your buddies like that's it right like yeah and if you're going to be on a girls team like that's your team that's yeah like that's who you're hanging out with drinking who you're beers. they're playing with and yeah, so coming to hang out with well there's a there's a bunch of guys that do that too like they'll play down or up like but they just want to like it's it's not so much about the hockey it's like drinking beers after the game yeah <laughs> like, just <laughs> looking for an excuse not to like quite go home yet like you don't <laughs> yeah. want to you don't want to miss it's a like, story uh, i think i'm gonna sit here and hang yeah, out yeah but that's have a few more but even with the ice raiders that's like kind of interloping to that just the fans and just the interactions the fans get with the players mm -hmm. our autograph stuff after the game like the players hang out sign autographs but that's we've got cool. i'd say at least 25 percent of the crowd hangs out for half hour 45 minutes yeah Players come out, they know fans by their name, they hang out, talk about the game. That's like, cool. yeah, I mean, I like that to me is honestly the, my favorite part of the game. Yeah. Like, win, lose, or draw. Like, the fans are there, they're drinking, half of them are in the bag already. Mm -hmm. And our guys just, and everyone's sweaty and just smells. Nobody but cares. It's just, like, pictures. they're just there to have fun. Dude, the pictures are awesome, especially like when you get the kids. And it's just, to me, that's the coolest part of the game is after the game is when the players are signing autographs. Because A, the players feel like rock stars. Oh, sure. And the fans are just so appreciative and blown away by – and it, this is by design. I'm not saying – well, actually, Reno Aces, you should do this. Um, big fan, by the way. But just the, the player access right there 
it's senior at hockey. And like these guys are getting treated like rock stars. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. So. We've had that a few times just sticking around and, you know, we see somebody that oh, yeah. played cool. his ass off and we're just like, dude, oh, that was an awesome game. <laughs> so, so last, yeah, we've had guys with like split open lips, one guy to cut open eye, like they're bleeding all over the place, <laughs> still like hasn't quite stopped bleeding. They're signing autographs for like an eight year old. Yeah. Parents are like, yeah, this is great. Everyone's I'm like, there. <laughs> okay, like if you're happy, I'm happy. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, I, I'm just thinking that's business. Yeah. There, there's like blood on the kid's sweatshirt. I'm like, I don't know if that's super sick sanitary but <laughs> no, no, we'll roll with it as long that. as the parents don't yell at me i'm cool with it yeah that's so. all that matters well <laughs> jess on that note we're gonna get you out of here no problem but i want to say thank you for coming in and kind of explaining a little bit for those people that have maybe shown some interest or mm -hmm. don't know a lot about what's going on but before we do get you out of here go ahead and promote the socials one more time mm -hmm. where we can find everything websites all of that kind of stuff so our main website, RenoIceRaiders.com, um, RenoIceRaidersMerch.com, a few things for sale online now. Yep. Find some good stuff. Uh, our Instagram handle, Reno Ice Ra at RenoIceRaiders. Mm -hmm. um, our email list, sign up through, through the website, YouTube channel, at Reno Ice Raiders. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so as long as you remember Reno Ice Raiders and you do a Google search, you're going to run into something. Uh, but those are the big ones, and that's actually where we release all of our stuff, honestly. Yeah. Like, we do emails, we do, but... I always tell people, you know, what's the schedule? What's this? I'm like, just follow on social. And that's essentially where we announce It'll everything. tell you the schedule for right. everything, where so, they're going to be. But, yeah, no, I I couldn't appreciate the support more. So I just, I like I said, everybody involved with it is just still blown away by how big it's gotten. And, like, honestly, like a positive impact. Like, yeah, I know it, I know it's easy to be, like, senior A hockey, kind of a bunch of shitheads. But it's... It's really morphed into a lot of that where a lot of our players are coaching now or have coached. They're helping with the kids in terms of skating sessions, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I, I would vehemently argue that, you know, the program is having massive positive impacts across yeah. multiple things, even though we kind of want to still t keep that jokey senior A feel to it too. Sure. You want to keep it the fun Right, like beer league sense. You want some slapstick, right? Yeah. Like that's, I I think that's part of the pitch. Like it's not, yeah, it's serious, but it's not too serious. But it's once again, it's one of those fine line things. So. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun. If you haven't checked out a game, please do because yeah. it's so much fun. And the same kind of what you were talking about. If you can't get a ticket online, <laughs> you can always try the walk up. Yeah. And see what you can get there. Be right on the glass and. Just enjoy everything firsthand. Yeah, I I always argue that too because people, it's open seating, right? There is mm -hmm. not enough seats for as many tickets as we sell, but that's kind of by design because I want people on the glass, and I would argue that being on the glass is a hundred times better than sitting up in the stands. Yes. Like if you want to sit, no problem, I get it. But being on the glass, I think, I don't know, that's just awesome. Yeah. It might, but you know, I'm biased. And nobody's gonna get mad at you for slapping on the glass unless the person next to you. Correct. tells you stop slapping on we the had glass. one guy break his hand like he was he was beating the shit out of the glass so much like just all game <laughs> and like a crowd had started to like disperse away but like i like finally i went to him at the end of the game i was like dude please chill like you were what do you mean no because he just was like yeah, yeah. And he had no He's idea and i like hand. looked at his hand and it was just black and oh, blue gosh. and red and he had broken his he broke a bone in his hand just Jeez. and I, he was I, he wasn't even drunk like it wasn't really? like he'd been boozing a bunch either but yeah and I, I just looked. I was, goes to my gym. Jesus. I was like, dude, I think you broke your hand. He's like, didn't even know. I was so into it. And like the guy, like the guy was an absolute, absolute <laughs> sweetheart, but an absolute meathead. And he was just like all game to the point where everybody around him was like moving away. Yeah. And I'm like, can you please talk to this guy? And but yeah, his hand was just jacked. I haven't seen him at another game though. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's still icing. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> this was last season. But yeah, like it's just that was one of the like weirder things I'd seen. I was like, Dude. his wife just goes, maybe watch the games from home they live stream them. if yeah if this dude if this dude has a wife i pray for her. just in the <laughs> sense like if you can break your hand and not quite know it like yeah you've got you in a good way you've got a couple screws you, loose. yeah you've got the best <laughs> kind of screws yeah. but just once again thank you you guys know where to follow everything here for ice raiders for us it's steven longley for me longley's line for our show light style studio for the studio here we'll talk to you guys next week thanks guys Cool. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.